Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the Hattons Andrew Barclay 040 saddle tank locomotive. And this one is Katie, which is one of the 16 inch ones, 16 inch variations. And the Andrew Barclays were used industry all across the UK, with about 100 being preserved, um, including Katie, which I'll come on to a little bit later. They were available in 12, 14, 16 inch variations. Um, I don't believe they did any bigger. They did do those are the Okoro variations. They did some O six O variations as well, um, with open cabs, such as Katie, um, and with the round windows again, such as Katie. Um, excuse the fact that the body's a bit loose. I'm still yet to chip her, hence why the screws are kept separately, um, and not screwed into the locomotive. Um, with round windows like Katie and also um, more rectangular styled windows as well. Um, Andrew Barclay made these from the late eighteen uh, from the late eighteen hundreds, um, and they were used up until the late seventies. Um, as I say, there were many variations, and they even went on after making these to make diesels such as the British Railways class O one and O six. Um, some of the variations were very interesting, such as the Pilus um, locomotives, which were designed for use um, in fuel pan, in fuel production plants and places like that. And they found work in lots and lots of places, especially in collieries, due to their relatively short wheelbase and quite big power output. Um, Katie, which is this particular one, is preserved at the Cherney Valley. It's a waiting overhaul um, where she is privately owned. And uh, when she is bought, uh, when she is overhauled, she will be brought back into use and will be used as a station pilot at Cheddleton. I believe she'll definitely be used as a station pilot, I believe, at Cheddleton. Okay, so let's get into the actual review. Um, packaging is really, really nice, actually. Um, Hatton's packaging. So it's very reminiscent of the old Halgen, but with some new features. Um, let's see if the left up here, the left does. So, excuse me, let me do this with the one hand. Um, picture of the locomotive there with the um, sex pen ready, which I'll come on to a little bit later. Um, excuse the hairs on this. But you take this bit off. There are the instructions, which are very, very useful. Roll it. And there's your block of ice. Or your iceberg, or whatever you fancy calling it. Um, which is obviously in its sleeve. I'm not going to go into that, because you've all seen it a thousand times before. And obviously this is padded here, 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 here. So it's a very, very well protected box, actually. And with some very good instructions, well done to... Um, Hatton's there because that's a very well designed box and um, very strong as well and um, the price the price for this model is 99 pounds um, in analog and um, which is very good um because of the detail and things which I'm coming on to next as you can see I'm just gonna move the a bit closer, so. excuse me excuse this okay so as you can see, we've got handrails, which is kind of obvious, grab rails, aligning, um, builder's plate, handrails there, whistle, obviously, the handbrake, sprung buffers, which are very nicely sprung, um, this is an open cab variant, so you can see all the cabin tune, which is very, very impressive if you ask me. Um, I would argue that it's one of my most detailed models in the cab and overall probably. Okay, uh, we set it down on this side. Now let's flip it over again because this is the side. Um, now I doubt my camera will pick this up, but there is.
and it's just come out of its casing actually is pipe work um, that culminates in a little thing that goes into the boiler here and that's all very very well detailed um, and very very impressive actually because um, it's so well done. Also on the underneath the underside of the body um, there is detail um, again pipe work which is very hard to pick up on camera Little things like that there which is all very very impressive okay just flip around again and one thing that I will say is that the cylinder cases appear to be a slightly different colour to the actual locomotive itself um, I believe that that's a little bit closer to what the KT is in real life and that's a little bit more light but I guess that's not too much of an issue and in this sort of light it doesn't really make a difference it's only when it's only because I've been studying it for a long long time um, build quality it's decent um, this actually had a couple of accidents. One, when I was trying to remove the body, because it's very difficult to remove the body, you have to pull out um, the little parts that go into the buffer in the boiler that I showed you earlier. Um, unfortunately, that's come out, um, but I managed to find it, so that just needs going back on. Um, and unfortunately, mine took a fall, um, and as you can see, this buffer here is bent in a bit. I know someone else has had this issue when I've been looking on Facebook about them, um, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue as this will be depicting a working locomotive on Heapton Colliery. Um, but and still, it was quite a big fall, and uh, that's the only thing. Those are the only two issues with it, um, and one of them was my fault, to be honest. Um, when I was trying to bring the body off, the piping snapped off. Um, maintenance, it's one of the more difficult locomotives to get into because you need to get rid of the pipe work, well you need to unclip the pipe work if you're confused as, what I'm, as to what I'm on about. Um, go on to the Hatton's YouTube channel, there's a tutorial on how to get into one of these and you can see it's quite difficult to do that. Um, and maintenance, another major thing is only Hatton's do the DCC chip. Which I, because I was expecting Gage Master or somebody to possibly bring one out, um, but unfortunately they haven't. So it's just Hatton's at the moment, and I've heard some negative things about Hatton's chips, but also some good things. Um, so I was holding off until Gage Master or somebody, or maybe Zen or someone, produced a chip for it. However, um, there's no, it doesn't look like there's any in the works. So I shall probably just leave it and uh, get a Hatton's one. Um, so we'll do. I'll maybe do a follow-up video on that. Um, just while I'm here, I'm just going to show you the handrails that are on the side there, because um, they're quite impressive as well. And obviously, we've got footsteps. Um, Apologies about coming back to that. Uh, running. Um, I'm just going to say the running session now. Um, well, a running video of her running, and uh, I hope you enjoy. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Welcome back everyone, um, yeah, so as you can see that was quite slow, um, smooth ring, that was on analogue obviously, um, and it's very smooth and slow, and quite powerful um, as well, but we'll come on to that a little bit later. Um, I had to come on to it now, strength versus prototype, it can pull a lot of ha um, wagons as is seen on the Hatton's web uh, on the Hatton's video on their YouTube channel. I would suggest go and check that one out because it really is impressive how much these things can pull. Um, and let's face it, not many people are going to be using it to pull more than that. Um, or even half of what that is really. So um, I think that's just a credit to the designers really. Um, just while we've got it here, you've got obviously the separate, separately fitted smoke box dart and a vent on the roof. There you go. 
Again, the details is kind of just something that I keep coming back to in these sort of videos because it helps to tie everything together. Um, usability, Great Western had one or two or a couple, I'm not 100% sure, but they definitely had one um, um, which was passed on into British Railways ownership and they were used in industry all over the UK and and Barclay sold locomotives all over the world. Um, one major place being Sri Lanka. Um, so there's lots of lots of usability for them. Um, they especially found use in coal mines, uh, in collieries, complexes. Um, modability, um, Model U, do special figures for these, which I'm in the middle of painting it, a Heapton green. Um, obviously you can fit lamps and things like that, which I think that lamp on the front there, that lamp line there is very, very useful. Because um, I will be getting some indus industrial lamps to go on this locomotive. Um, you could repaint it if you wanted to. I'm going to get some etched name plates to say Katie. Because obviously this is one that's preserved at Chernick Mellon. Um, builder's plate. I'm going to see if I can get the etched version of them. Um, DCC and then you could weather it as well. Um, I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to weather it or not. Um, but if I do, I'll do another video on it. Um, marketplace, now this is the more interesting part of it. Now this gets quite interesting actually. Because you've got the Hornby Packet W4, which they've just announced a couple more versions of. Now, to me, it's better, because of the um, pipe work and things like that, the the packet the packet isn't a bad model by far don't get me wrong, um, but I just think Andrew Barclay, um, just outdoes it, and um, because of the various bits of pipe work and things like that, um, and just for the sake of argument now obviously this locomotive has been heavily weathered, um, and if you want to see more on it, do check out my video on it, um, is the pug it's ahead of it it's about 20 years later ahead of it which makes sense because it shows that that locomotive was made uh, the design of that locomotive was 20 years ago so that does show the progress that the companies are making um, but do go and check the reviews out for them two models respectively um, just to see more in depth about them and um, just one thing just before I go on to the scores the inside of the, this is the first time I've ever seen this, and I know it's only been done on a handful of models, but inside the chimney there's detail, which is very, very impressive. But again, you won't see it most of the time. Um, so, the scores. Um, packaging, I've got a 10. Uh, price is 10. Detail, I'm giving that a 9, um, just because of the slight difference in the paint colour there. Uh, build quality is a 7, maintenance is a 7, running is a 10, build quality is a 10, strength versus prototypes a 10, modability is a 10, and marketplace is again a 10, which gives it 93 over 100, which makes it a grade A, and um, incidentally is the highest scoring model I've ever reviewed. Um, it's a great model for industrial railway modelers, and um, the price is good for what you get, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other Hatton's locomotives have got to offer. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of shots of Katie as she is now, um, or oh, when I've last taken pictures of her, um, not quite in this condition, but yeah, um, I hope to see you guys again very soon, do tell me what you think of this model and um, this kind of more, this different style of review that I'm trying, so um please leave something in the comment section and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. See you later.